and very touched, right? Thank you for beautiful, wonderful. Merciful Heavenly Father, thank you for giving this chance to learn your words. We are here in front of your words. Through your words, please let us be saved by the grace of heaven. Let us understand we are sinful, also we have a sinful nature. Because of that, we were the lost. We are the lost before your presence. Please let us give eternal life through the precious shedding of all your blood on the cross. Please let us realize the true love of God on the cross. We are going to have last session. We are going to listen the true gospel of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Please let us be humble to receive eternal grace. And please let us find ourselves by ourselves in front of Holy God. From the beginning to the end, we only rely on you. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross because of our sin. Amen. All right, let's resume. Um, <clears throat> actually, uh, 2 p.m., this is really risky hours, right? <laughs> this is always uh, my burden. But I will do my best, but you should do your best. Okay, uh, God, He is going to give eternal life. Um, all right, uh, let's have, summarize uh, what we have learned so far. This is our conclusion. Uh, we have sins. We are guilty, right? And we have sinned so far. And we are sinner uh, in front of God. Between us, it's no problem. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 said, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We all have sinned. Sometimes we are uh, watching some news, uh, some criminal cases, and then we can see that, oh, that horrible sinner. Yes, that is in front of our eyes. But in God's view, everyone we have sinned, including myself. Before I believe in gospel, before I believe in Jesus, I, uh, I was really skeptical to believe in uh, God's message because um, why God, uh, he, 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 he gave us the law. When we uh, look into the law, this is impossible to follow. Why God gave us? But when I studied the words of God, Romans chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, I, can, I would understand that. Let me read here in read part. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh, no flesh, no one will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. No one can be justified by keeping the law. No flesh. Yes, this, is a, this makes sense. This really makes sense. So, uh, 이건 누가 히타킨 것 같거든요. 한번 봐줄래요? Uh, this is the uh, good explanation. Why God gave us the law? Hmm? No one could be justified by the law. Bible said, through the law, we became conscious of sin. We are able to know, I have sinned. Hmm? That's why all the law of God is here in front of me as a mirror. And then seeing my spiritual condition. Matthew chapter 19, verse 25 and 26. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? Who then? Yes, we could have the same question before God. No one could be justified by the law of God. Who then? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. By, uh, by human effort and human desire, not possible to cleanse all our sin by ourselves. With man, this is impossible. This is impossible. Which means, as a man, no one can clean and forgive my sin. And also, even myself, 
also cannot remove and erase and cleanse all my sins by myself. That's not possible. But, fortunately, the Bible said, with God, with God, all things are possible. By, by human being, there's no way. But if God, he wants to forgive us, it's possible. That's why this is one way we have to rely on. The, there is no alternative. There is no any other, else, uh, any other way. Standard of God through the law, no one can reach the standard of God. Why? He is the um, holy. He is the holy. Understanding my condition is really important. <clears throat> One day, Jesus explained, why should we avoid entering, heaven, uh, entering hell? Because of this. Here, Mark chapter 9, verse 43 to 48. Let me read here. If your hands cause you to sin, yes, if your hands cause you to sin, cut it off. Have you ever cut your arms off before? No? Mm. Really painful, right? It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell into fire that shall never be quenched. Where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, and if your feet, a foot cause your sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame, uh, lame rather than having two feet to be cast into hell, into fire. That shall never be quenched. Continue. Where their worms does not die, and the fire is not quenched. And if your eyes cause you to sin, plug it out. Why Jesus said, recommend them. If your sin, if your hands commit sin, cut it off. If your foot commits sin, cut it off. If your eyes guide you to commit sin, plug it out. How painful it is. Hmm? Why Jesus said that? You know, losing body part, the pain of losing body part, it cannot be uh, competitive, the pain of hellfire. Whatever, uh, no matter what, with any cost, avoiding to go to the hellfire. Even you are losing body parts, right? Jesus emphasized that you should not go to the hell. Here, what is hell like? It is written in the Bible, most of this verse is spoken by Jesus himself. The fiery lake of a burning surfer. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. The fire is never blown out. Mark chapter 9, verse 48. Sorted with fire. Mark chapter 9, verse 48, 49. No rest day or night. Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. Memory remains. Luke chapter 16, 23. The darkness. Matthew 22, 13. Eternal separation from family and beloved people, Luke chapter 13, 28. No chance to escape, Matthew 25, verse 46. You know, you, no matter what, with any cost, you cannot go here. You shouldn't go here. That's why Jesus came down to the earth. We came here as a sinner. That's why we bear lots of uh, the sins as a fruit. And we will die. And then judgment. And then we will punish in the hell forever. God and I, we have an issue. What is that? There's the sin. Without sin, it's peaceful. But because of this sin, we have trouble. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sin have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So what's the point of these scriptures? Hmm? What make us separate from God? That's the sin, right? But we never care about my sin before. Why? We haven't reflected ourselves yet before the words of God. That's why not knowing the Bible make you, make you comfortable for the meantime, right? But when you stand before God, and then when you stand before the judgment seat, God, He is going to open the scriptures. Based upon His scriptures, you will be punished. You will be judged. You will be condemned. Psalm chapter 5, verse 4 said, For you are not God who takes pleasure 
in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. Any of evil, any of tiny, small sin cannot dwell with God. Have you ever tried to mix with oil and water? I did before when I was young. Put oil a little bit here and then shake. It looks like a blend well, right? But it's time, a matter of time. Put it here quietly and then totally water and oil separated, right? Sin is like that. The sinner is the same. You cannot stay and stand before God. That's why Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. Repent. Which one comes first? Repent. Repent. And believe the gospel. Right? Believe it, just to believe the gospel, this is how such a lovely voice is this. Gospel is good, right? Meaning of gospel is good news, right? Everyone willing to welcome, to listen the gospel, right? But Jesus, he didn't say just believe the gospel. What did he say? Repent. Those who, to those who repent themselves, they deserve to believe in gospel, right? That's, that's why. Because of this, Jesus was rejected by so-called righteous people. They never thought about that they are righteous. They, they never thought about they have a sinner. Hmm? They, they are sinner. They always think about, oh, we are the righteous. Hmm? We are a good person, nice person. Hmm? They look they used to look at the tax collector and different prostitute, huh? the sinner only. That's why. Their, their sin encouraged them to be righteous, to consider themselves as a righteous person. But when God saw them, they are hypocrites. That's why repentance comes first. Right? To those who repent, they really need the mercy of God. In order to be born again, <clears throat> in order to uh, receive the salvation, there are some conditions is demanded by God. First one, believe God's existence and believe Bible is true God's words. Why? Bible show us the way, how to go to heaven, how to repent, how to repent myself, how to be good and justi justified before the living God. But they don't know. Hmm? Uh, they don't know. Hmm? how to believe in God, and also they don't know the Bible. That's why any kind of words coming from the Bible, they don't understand. If you believe in the Bible, you will realize I'm a sinner, not before the people, but before God, right? If, once, if, once you have this mind in your heart, immediately you would have a repentant heart. And Though to those who repent, God redeemed their entire sin and believed the, God, believed the gospel. Good news. Yeah, so far, we, we, we rush to get up to this, right? Mm. Here, I'm, I'm going to draw a thorn tree. You know thorn trees? Lots of spike, right? The first one. This thorn tree... Lots of spikes. At once, you can recognize this is a thorn tree. This is a lot of spikes. It very looks dangerous. And second one, uh, you removed all uh, half of the spikes of this thorn tree. Only one side, there is a spikes. And third, you remove most of the spikes of this thorn tree. And fourth, uh, remove all the spikes of thorn tree, and then you attach the apple on it. Hmm? The question, which one is true thorn tree? All, yes, correct. All, right? So, uh, let's pretend this, this thorn tree is, is human. We can find the first type of people at the prison cell, right? They just follow their own instinct. They want to kill somebody, they kill. They want to hit somebody, they hit it. Hmm? Hit. So, number one, uh, 
Unfortunately, we are not, right? What about number two? Uh, they know the law. Hmm? And then um, even they commit a sin, mm, they, they, uh, they're really good at avoiding that. They're still here. Not, not, uh, government cannot put them behind the bar. But still, they are lived together with as, as our neighbor. Hmm? And third, most of spikes removed, right? Only few. Who is this kind of people? We are, right? We have taken care of good care by good parents, right? We have, we have some education and well-educated and then protected by good society. Hmm? We are number three. What about number four? What about number four? It looks like, it doesn't look like thorn tree, right? It looks like apple tree, right? Mm. Are you a priest? Are you a pastor? Are you a nun? Are you a deacon? Elder? Hmm? Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes? Hmm? Who are you? Number four, right? But in God's view, everyone, everyone, all have sinned. Right? This is what we are before God. Psalm chapter 50, 16 to 22. Let me read here. But <clears throat> to the wicked, God said, What right have you declare my statutes? Oh, take my covenant in your mouth. These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought that you, I was altogether like you. But I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this. Consider this. You who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. God is waiting. He, he, has, he has anger before the sinner, right? When God's rage explodes, hmm? There is no mercy. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 12. Come, one says, I will bring wine and we will fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. Tomorrow will be as today, as much more abandoned. This is a great delusion of the sinner. Hmm? They used to think tomorrow is the same. Huh? Same old, same old. Hmm? That's why. So far, no problem. Tomorrow, going to be no problem. Yes, for the meantime. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 8 to 11. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you still murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other god whom you do not know? And then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and said, We are delivered to do all this abomination. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I even I have seen it, say the Lord. You know, my house. Uh, these people who flock together inside of the, this house, which is called by my name, means, you know, somebody who attend the church. Hmm? They gathered together and then they said, hmm? we, are, we, we are delivered. We are already done. We saved. What base? Hmm? This is a great misunderstanding about not being born again Christian. Yeah? Not born again Christian. This is a really serious problem nowadays. There is no any uh, such a church uh, telling the uh, delivering this uh, judgment and delivering the story of the hellfire hmm? and then pointing out their sins and touching their sensitive conscience issue. They don't do this. Why? People hate this one to listen, right? You know what? Jesus did before. That's why he was rejected, right? If you study the Bible, Bible telling us unpleasant truth, uncomfortable truth, right? If you really humble and honest, even that kind of harsh word of God, you could be knee down 
And then you could beg the mercy of God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, you saw me. Right, rightly. I'm a sinner. At this moment, right now, only I beg you mercy. Job chapter 25, verse 5 and 6. If even the moon does not shine, and the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man who is a maggot and a son of man who is warm? Have you ever seen a maggot? No, you, you, don't you know? Uh, do you know what is maggot? Right? Mm. Have you kissed it? <laughs> no? Have you ever eat maggot? It's really adorable, right? White one is very cute. Mm. Between maggots, there's no disgusting feeling, right? But what about our, our, our feeling? In the dining table, once a maggot jump over after taking, uh, taking shower and they're wearing some perfume and then uh, boldly come approach to your dish, what did you do? Oh, you are so clean. <laughs> Smells good. Are you going to say it like that? No. Wow, what is that? This is maggot, right? Be between, between maggot, no disgusting feeling, right? The sinner before God's eyes is maggot. What about the worm? Hmm? Worm. Hmm? Uh, have you ever tried uh, this one uh, while you're climbing mountain or trekking some place? If you uh, uh, flip over the, some rocks, hmm? In, inside, be, uh, beneath the, the rocks, you can see some worms together, right? But if you open it, the worms immediately disappear, right? And they really want to go somewhere in the darkness, right? This is a worm. When God saw the sinner, they are the mega, they are the worm. So, in your bed, there is a couple of megas, hmm? in the middle of the honeymoon. And also some worms scrawling there, right? So what would you do? Oh, finally you visit my place. Let's sleep together and cover it with your blankets. No. Insecular, right? And then collect them and then dump at once, right? When God dumped all the sin return hellfire, it's the same feeling. Do you understand why God created disgusting insects in this earth? He is explaining us and telling us what is meaning of disgusting. Understand? Non-born again people, hmm? it's the same like that. No mercy, no mercy, right? When you kill the cockroach, have you felt any pain of your conscience? No, no feeling. Right? No mercy. This is what Bible says. Psalm chapter 7, verse 11. God is just a judge. And God is angry with wicked every day, every day. Here, let's imagine this one. Whenever you commit a sin and go against God, what if God hit your back once? You could not live here like that. Right? But still, he holds his breath to see you. And still, he has long suffering. And then provides some chance to uh, repent to yourself. In order to be saved, we need to know what is not being born again in the Bible. There are some stories here. Acts chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. You know, uh, Cornelius, this is a very famous name hmm? in English culture. Uh, this is a story of Cornelius. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what uh, was called in Italian uh, raiment, uh, a uh, devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. Question. What do you think? Um, was he saved or not? Was he saved or not? 
Cornelius is a saved person or not? He, he, he's just a simple, good person. What, he, what did he do? Uh, here, um, Acts chapter 11, verse 13 and 14. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, who said to him, Send the man to Joppa and call for Simon, who surname, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. Why Cornelius and his family need the Peter to listen the word of God in order to be saved. Why? He's not saved. Right? Look at here. He was a very charitable man and devoted man and feared God. Not alone with household. Right? Give alms generously to the people. And he, he didn't forget make a prayer personally. Pray to God always. Right? Why he need the Peter to listen to the words of God? Not saved. That's why. Peter has been sent it. Not saved. Cornelius is not saved, right? What about under the uh, Ethiopian eunuch? You heard about this already. Acts chapter 8, verse 27 and 31. So he arose and went, and behold, a man, Ethiopian, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under uh, Candace, the king of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury. And he'd come to Jerusalem to worship, and returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless something, uh, someone guide, guide me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. Then Philip opened his mouth and then begin, uh, beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now, as they went down to row, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, So, here's water. What hindered me from being baptized? Ethiopian eunuch, uh, he was very sincere. He had a zeal for God, right? And attend. He never missed the service which is held in Jerusalem, right? Far distance, but the, he didn't hesitate to attend this service. Never missed. And meditate the Bible scriptures. While back and forth, he, can, he didn't play the video game and watching YouTube. Always reading the scriptures, scriptures. That was uh, Isaiah chapter 53. He couldn't understand why. Who is Jesus? And then Philip approached him and then interpreted who is Jesus. And then finally, the Ebenezer, he got saved, right? Even Jehovah uh, has a zeal for God and attended the service, never missed and uh, meditated the Bible scriptures. Ebenezer wasn't saved. Right? This is not the meaning of being born again. It's being saved. What about here? This young man, he graduated church school. Luke chapter 18, verse 18. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He called Jesus as a good teacher. He had a good experience being a student at church school. Luke chapter 18, 20 and 21, you know the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not uh, bear false witness, honor your father and mother. And he said, all the things I have kept from my youth. Which means he was very sincere, good person, good student. He graduated with high grade. This ruler kept the commandment from his youth. And he believed in God from youth. It's not saved. Right? He couldn't build the confidence. Hmm? Can go to heaven. Inherit eternal life. Right? This is what uh, is written in the Bible as not being born again. The earthly things before God is this. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 says, But we are all like an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, 
and our iniquities like wind have taken us away. Let's read again. We all, we are all like unclean things. Okay, I can't agree. And all our righteousness are like a filthy rags. All our, what? Filthy and dirty sin? No. Even our righteousness in front of God is like a filthy rags. It's a mob, dirty one. Right? We have to understand this one. Even our righteousness is not acceptable. Hmm? Cannot please God. Just deny it. This is nothing. Right? Doing good. Hmm? Be sincere. It's good. Yes. Yeah. But in order to receive the salvation, please set aside for a while. What you have done is good righteousness is good. Yes, yeah, set aside for a while in order to receive the salvation. Here, um, if you think like that, do you guess to enter the heaven? Yes, I guess. What about, do you hope to go to heaven? Yes, I hope. Do you expect that you will be in heaven someday? Yes, I expect that. Do you think sometimes you can go there and sometimes you cannot go there? Whatever. Do you think that no one is able to know, only after death you are able to know? All this is, not, is true evidence you are not being born again yet. All this answer is coming out from a non-born again person. Not acceptable. In order to be saved, you should know two things. John chapter 13, verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. The only true God. Why God emphasize three times? Because there are so many different God, fake God, we have. That's why the Bible emphasizes three times. The, not A, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. After we studied about the only true God in the Bible, we are able to understand God is justice, right? And now we're going to study about who is Jesus Christ. So let me explain about God's character here. Mm. Ah, very tough work, right? Right, here. Uh, let me show some situation happening here. There is one boy uh, who is really beloved by his mother. Mother has the only son. But one day, if this son uh, made a horrible mistake, like uh, rob someone, right? Mm. And mother, this mother only has the loving heart. Only has uh, the loving heart. That's why mother said, I cannot dare to punish my dear child. Oh, my dear child, it is okay. Whatever you do, i fully ready to forgive you. This is big trouble, right? This is not a uh, good family, right? We can, we can see, what is that? Love, right? Without righteousness. This is a problem. What about this case? Their own son, but... Mother only carrying the righteousness. But well, one day, her own son made a mistake, a broke flower vessel. Yeah, it could happen, right? Mm. But mother said, mm? This is your fault, isn't it? You will be punished by 1,000 hit according to the house regulation. This son said, Is she my true mother? Yes, we can see. What is that? Righteousness, right? Without love. Both of case has a big trouble, right? But God loves and treats us with righteous love, which means He's not going to ignore His righteousness to love us. And also, in order to serve His own righteousness to, uh, for us, and He's not going to ignore His loving heart. Right? Well balanced. Righteousness and love. So that's why when God, He created a law and established the law, because of His justice, He set the law. Wage of sin is death. 
He is the establisher of his own law. That's why he couldn't violate by himself. The content of this law is this one. The sinner must die. But because of his loving heart, when he established this law, he gave a different, uh, very unique and specific law, included when he established the law. He really wanted to forgive the sinner. So he set the redemption law. Through the sin offering, people can approach the holy God. The content is death instead of the sinner. Through this way, we are able to go to the God. Uh, it was given in Old Testament time in many ways and in many forms here. Let me briefly explain this one. But from now on, don't for a sleep. Understand? Mm. We are going, if you, if you do it, we are going to run outside. Every one of us. <laughs> then we will get back here again, okay? So, listen carefully, okay? Leviticus chapter 4, 3 and 4, let me read here. If the anointed priest sins, really? Priest? They are able to commit a sin? Yes. Right? The anointed priest sins bring guilty on the people, then let him offer the offer to the Lord for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bull without blemish, as a sin offering. Pre when priest commits sin, he has to offer, instead of his life, a young bull. Anointed priest, when he commits sin, he has to bring a young bull. And then he has to kill. And then take the blood and then show as a proof of death before God. In this case, a whole congregation of Israel sinned. But if the whole congregation of Israel have sinned, they also offer a young bull. Then the bull shall be killed before the Lord. This is sin offering. Whole congregation, when they commit sin, they have to bring a young bull and they have to slay this one. And show this blood in front of God's eyes as a proof of death. And Leviticus chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. In this case, a ruler has sinned. A ruler. And then he, is, see, he, he knows, recognizes he is guilty. In case, a kid of God, a male God, offered. And they have to kill. A ruler, a kid of God, a male God, need to be killed. And take the blood. If anyone of common people sins, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 27 to 31, if, you, if anyone of the common people sin, in case they have to bring a kid of God, a female God, they have to kill. So, the priest shall make atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. This is a sin offering, sin offering by the redemption law. Anyone of the common people, they have to bring a kid of God, a female God, and then kill, then take the blood, and then show as a proof of this before God. Summarize. Uh, here, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 35 said, uh, He shall live up all his fat, as the fat of the lamb is removed from the sacrifice, blah, 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 right? So the priest shall make atonement for his sin that he has committed and it shall be forgiven him. This is the way to be forgiven their sins, through the redemption law. Look at here. They have opened it, and then they remove all the fat from the organs, and, you know, the, the segregate some muscles and bones. You know, is, is this really the pleasant work? No, this is really disgusting, right? And this is really hard work. Whenever they do this, they remember that, oh, this is happening because of... My sin. Hmm? Sin drove us with, through this disgusting work, right? They are able to understand what make happen this because of their sins. Let's summarize this one. When priests commit a sin, they offer a young bull, right? And when whole congregation commit a sin, they 
offer a young bull, right? And the ruler committed sin, they have to offer male gods. And any, any, anyone, common people, they commit a sin, they offer female gods, right? So question, you commit a sin. Hmm? What would you offer? Hmm? What would you like to offer instead of you? Hmm? Let's find out this one. If you find out this answer, legally, you're okay, right? Hmm. Let's find. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of creature is in the blood, and I have given it uh, to you to make atonement for yourself on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life, right? I have given it to you to make atonement in order to make forgiveness for ourselves on the altar, right? Um, it is the blood that makes atonement for ourselves. This is important. That's why without this blood, without this sacrifice, there is no forgiveness. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 said, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Shedding of blood. Are you ready to shed all your blood in order to forgive your sins? Before forgiveness, you would die, right? Mm. Actually, the performance was done here in the tabernacle when they were in, in the wilderness. Tabernacle is like that. <clears throat> Once a year, mm, in order to redeem all the Israelites' sin, uh, God gave this law. Uh, it, it called uh, Atonement Day, Yom Kippur. Uh, that day, all the Israelites' sin uh, transferred the, sacrifice, uh, the sacrificial animal. And then their sin, one year's sin, transferred to the sacrificial animal. And all the sin of the Israelites transferred to where? Animal. Right? The wage of sin is death. That's why the sin is transferred to the animal. That's why the animal died instead of Israelites. Then Israelites become clean. This is a shadow of death of Jesus Christ. Right? Bleeding and death. Scapegoat. This is happening. Let me explain this one. What is this? Bring the animal, right? This is a happen it, 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 inside of the tabernacle, right? Bring the animal. What about here? Laying hands upon animal, right? And what about here? Killing the animal, right? What about here? Taking the blood. What about here? Carrying the blood. All these things happen at the tabernacle, right? What if, if you kill a young bull, uh, how many cups of blood you can take? Not cup, right? A lot, right? Have you ever smelled the smell of blood? Really disgusting, not unpleasant smells, right? They have to die instead of human sin. The sin is spiritual. Animal doesn't have any sin, right? Even a dog bite me, I cannot condemn this dog. You commit a sin, right? Sin is spiritual, do you know that? Only human has. But animal, animal, they have slayed because of human sin. And then the rain body, burn at the burn altar. And blood needs to be taken by the high priest. And they have to bring the blood up to here, the sanctuary, most holy place. If you go inside, there's a one golden box there, like this. Just box. This is Aaron's body step, and this is a tabernacle tablet, and then golden pot, which is contained the manna. This contains 
is inside of the ark. And then cover it. Uh, uh, and then cover it. But here, let's focus. Let's take a note here. The cover is very unique safe, unique figure. Here, uh, if you cover it like this, hmm? the archangel watching and observing, what is that? Here, 10 commandments and tablet. Whoever violates this one, we will punish them, right? This is the Ark of Covenant. But Holy Spirit, uh, the, the high priest, uh, when he brings the uh, blood, right? The only blood, he can, he can go inside. And then he sprinkle some places upon here and seven times. And then uh, if you look at uh, this box uh, above, you can see what? Blood. Actually, this blood covered what? Ten commandments tablet, right? But this blood is qualified in case they, they could be forgiven, right? What if you cover with uh, pig blood? Not acceptable, right? And after finish this offering and high priest coming out from the most holy place, Israelites, they could be pleased. Wow, God, he forgave our sin. That's the proof of forgiveness. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9. It was a symbol for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. That is problems. Just the slaying and taking blood and spreading blood of animal, right? They have to do this again next year, right? This is unstable and unperfect. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11, verse 1 said, For the law, having a shadow of good things to him, and not very image of the things, can, can never with this same sacrifice which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect. This sin offering has some uh, issue because of this. Cannot make, some, make a person perfect forever. That's why Hebrews chapter 10, verse 3 and 4 said to us, But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sin every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. Yes, could not take away the sin. In order to redeem human sin, God requires blood of human. Blood of human. So, the perfect offering and the condition of sacrifice is this one, the first one, human blood. Do you have this kind of human, a person who can provide, willing to provide this blood for you? Do you have? Oh, <laughs> really? What about your friends, best friends? What about your mother? Probably your mother has more sin than you, right? <laughs> Why? Older than you. Do you have this human? No, we don't. And also all of a sudden one man appeared in front of you, I will die for you. But if you look into him, he already got that sentence and execution day is tomorrow early morning. Yes. I have no choice. I will die. But why not? I will take your sin. It's not possible. Right? We need innocent person. Right? And three. Finally, you couldn't find it, but there's a good news. Even, uh, you don't even see him. Right? But he died for your sin. And he was innocent man. And then he provide, willing to provide all his blood for you. I couldn't see him. I couldn't uh, understand why he did do this. But one thing was clear. He loves me much more than his life. Am I right? Do you agree? Right? So, do you have this, uh, this man who matched with this perfect condition? Do you have? The problem is this one. In our human history, we cannot find such kind of person. Right? That's why Isaiah chapter 53, uh, 59, verse 16 
15 and 16, remedy it here. Let's read, uh, listen carefully. So truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arms brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness is sustained him. There is no such kind of person who, can, who could be sacrificed for the entire human being as a sinner, right? That's why there is no intercessor. There is no such kind of man. That's why God, he set up his mind. I need to go there. I need to go there. That's why the God, the Creator, He jumped into the human world. But in order to come here, He needs a flesh, right? Mm. But every flesh, they need belly button. Do you have belly button? Really? Show me. We all have, right? Which means we are human, right? Jesus came down to the earth without belly button, but it's not going to work. Why? He needs to be human first, right? But there's one problem in order to come here as a human being with a belly button. Man and woman, they love each other and then they, they give birth, right? But if Jesus comes through that kind of way, Jesus is also contaminated by sin. He, 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 he could come as a descendant, descendant of Adam, the descendant of sinner, right? Jesus could come as a sinner. It's not going to work. That's why Jesus, the God himself, he uh, had a good idea. Without man, he need to come to the earth. That's why Jesus come to the earth through the virgin birth. Someone said, that's not possible. Yeah, that's not possible. But God did it, who created entire universe, right? The God, he could do that. He's almighty, right? That's why Jesus comes through the blessing first without man. That's why the Bible said Jesus is a descendant of son of a woman. Hmm? Why? He is not relevant with man. Jesus came down to the earth in order to die. Here, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you help prepare for me. A body, prepare. This body was body of Jesus Christ. He came down to the earth as a high priest, and then he used his body as a sacrificial offering. That what Jesus had done. The first Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 said, This is faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. That Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinner, of whom I am chief. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinner. Save a sinner, right? Such kind of person like me. Here, there's a word. Here is a word. A full of sin now. I'm here as a sinner. Jesus came down to the earth. Hmm? 2,000 years ago. Hmm? And then he died on the cross. And then now he's not here. He ascended again. Hmm? He had done his work completely. When he, Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. What was finished? Even he's dying on the cross. So much trouble he had. But at the last breathing, after that, he said that it is finished. Everything is done, completely done. John chapter 10, verse 18. No one take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Yes, Jesus came to the earth in order to die. He laid down his life by himself. Mark chapter 10, verse 45 said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be saved, but to serve, uh, and to give his life a ransom for many. Ransom. Ransom for not just specific people, for many, right? Those who believe this gospel. John chapter 14, verse 8 and 9, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, 
Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus declared by himself, I'm the Father. Yes, John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my Father are one. Jesus was God himself with flesh. In human vocabulary, any kind of human vocabulary cannot perfect to explain this one. That's why we used to say he came down to the earth as a son of God, right? The God incarnated something, but it's not enough. But this is what God did. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw that Jesus come toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Before Jesus coming, six months earlier, the John the Baptist came down to the earth. And then his role through his entire life, he has to introduce Jesus to Israel. That was that. That was his work. When, Jesus, when John uh, met Jesus, he introduced Jesus like that. Behold the Lamb of God, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is really uh, hard to interpret as Korean, as English, and Philippine words. But Jewish people, very easy to understand. Why? Jewish people, Israel, every single day, they perform this sin offering, right? When John the Baptist introduces Jesus, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, immediately they would understand. Oh, this young man whose name is called Jesus, he's going to die on, die like a sacrificial lamb in order to take away the sin of the entire world? Easy to interpret. Understand? Jesus was introduced like that way. And John chapter 19, verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine and he said, let's read together, it is finished. It is finished. And bowing, uh, and bowing his head, he gave up. What was finished? This one. Hebrews chapter 1. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 here. Who, being uh, brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. He had by himself purged our sins. That was done. It is finished. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11, 12. But Christ came on high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, nor made it hands that is, not of his uh, this creation, not with the blood of goats and carp, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal life. Eternal life. Yes, Israelites, they, they used to kill the animals, goats and lambs, right? And calves. With this blood, they were asking, eh, please forgive us our sins every single year. But now Jesus came down to the earth as a high priest. There is no such kind of qualified high priest on earth. That's why he came down to the earth. And he used his own blood in order to redeem all humans' sin. Right? And then finally he gave us the eternal redemption. Eternal forgiveness. This is what was done on the cross. Do you understand? This is what Jesus had done for us. Here. Book of Isaiah, chapter 53 said, <clears throat> The Jehovah, the God, He transferred all our transgression upon the Jesus Christ. I didn't. Right? Can you see your face here? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is mine. Very handsome. Right? Uh, he's here. Deacon Philip. Could you see your face here? How about Brother Jake? Mm. So you, all your face are here. Mm? You're here. Mm. Oh, this is my wife. Uh, yeah. 
all our sins transfer to Lamb of God, the Jesus Christ. All sin of the world, not only mine, all the sin of the world transfer to this sacrificial Lamb, Jesus Christ. All sins of the world is transferred to Jesus Christ. The wage of sin is death. Jesus died. He came here to die as a Passover lamb. Here, give his life as ransom for many. The legally he punished by the law of God instead of us. Jesus, that's why Jesus died on the cross. Here, from the eternity to eternity, God set some timetable, a time period for the meantime. The first man to Adam and the last man, whoever, right? From the beginning to the end, all the sin of the world was taken by Jesus when he died on the cross. Here are all my sins. I start my life here, and now I'm here. I will die here, right? My past sin, present sin, even my future sin, all my sins, all my sins covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Redeemed eternally, eternally. I said the Yom Kippur, right? The Atonement Day. Yom is the day. And Kippur coming from the words Kapar. Kapar has meaning, uh, it is cover, cover. That's why our sin covered with blood of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. It's done. Completely done. It is finished. There is a word here. I may live here. I was born here. I'm living here. I will die and bury my, my body in here. There are lots of sins from the beginning to the end. Hmm? All people's sins hmm? God put on the Jesus Christ. And my past sin, my present sin, and even my future sin, all my sin were taken by Jesus when he died on the cross. And then he covered with his blood to give eternal life, eternal redemption. That's why it is finished. Here, Old Testament, <clears throat> it is a redemption law. Old Testament, only for the Jew, through the animal blood, right? And once a year, they have to perform this one again and again, over and over. The validity is one year only. This is a shadow of real body. What, which one is real body? Real body is death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hmm? What about New Testament? New Testament, for all human in this world, not blood of animal, right? but the blood of Jesus Christ. And once for all, the validity is forever. Yeah, forever. And image is, this is real, true image and real body of the gospel. Right? All of a sudden, a young man came down to the earth and died on the cross. People can understand why this young man died on the cross. They would understand, right? That's why, in order to explain this one, in history of Israelites, God showed this one over and over every single year. That's why whoever could match the death of Jesus Christ or the death of Passover lamb, they would understand, oh, this way, because of this, Jesus died on the cross. They would understand that, right? Here, let's imagine, uh, let's think about this. Some people uh, who, who used to stay, uh, live in, in, in the middle of time, right? Uh, let's imagine this one. Um, uh, let's pretend this room is our world, okay? And then open the door and go outside is eternal world. Do you understand? Uh, God is not, yeah, God could be here and God is over there, right? And then he shout me, your sin were forgiven. He forgave my sin, not here, over there. Right? Eternal word. That's why his forgiveness, there is, there is no validity. Right? His forgiveness, he forgave my sin over there. That's why his forgiveness is forever and eternal forgiveness. But 
we received the message in here, right? That's why we could have some question. Oh, my past sin forgiven. Yeah, because that sin is already done. I couldn't understand that. Even my sin right now, I couldn't understand that. How my future sin could be forgiven? This is what we are thinking. That's why you made a question. And then open the door and then shout to God and made a question. Hey God, how long have you forgiven my sin? But that question is wrong. The sound cannot depart from that door. Right. Into the eternity, there is no conception how long. Right? Do you understand? His forgiveness is forever forgiveness, eternal forgiveness. Hmm? So, could you believe this? This is what the Bible says, right? He forgave our sin completely, totally, forever. If God can forgive my past sin, and also He can forgive my future sin as well. Why? Let me draw some here. Jesus died on the cross, right? <clears throat> this is my past sin. <clears throat> I'm here. If God, He can forgive my past sin, right? In my standpoint, this is my past, right? But in God's standpoint, this is a future for him, right? If we could, uh, if we could forgive my past sin, why not this one, right? He could do it. If you're sure your sin were forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, right? Why not this one? It's possible, right? In my standpoint, this is the future. It's not happened yet. But in God's viewpoint, no problem. No problem. How? You have to understand this one. God, He's the one created the time. You know? The scientists still want to figure, it, figure this out. What is the time? But God created this one. Right? He forgave my sin from the eternal world. Why he need to forgive my sin eternal, eternally? If God declared, I will forgive your sin million years long, that's enough for us, right? We, we can't complain. But God, God said, million years is not enough. Why? He really wants to stay with you forever, right? What if after million years expired this love? We have to go to hellfire, right? This is not a love. That's not a perfect love. So that's why Jesus, he died on the cross. And then he declared, it is finished. It's done. No problem, it's done. That's the meaning of crucifixion. Crucifixion. Do you understand now, right? What is the difference? Yes. The cross, this is the good explanation about love of God and about his justice. When, whenever you see the cross, you can find two things, his righteousness and his love together. Do you agree? Yeah. Can you see your sin here? You know, I tell you a secret today. This is my past sin. This is my present sin. This is my future sin. All my sin totally covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Understand? Oops. <laughs> Whose sin is this? Mm. Whose sin is this? You know, if you take the gospel with this, this is a big problem, right? I, I'm not going to take this sin as mine, right? Some people, they have taught, they've been taught, your, your forgiveness could be canceled. Your salvation could be canceled. This is a heresy. Jesus is not like us. There is no condition to forgive our sins. Understand? 100%. Totally cleansed. This is our God. This is my God, right? He is God. Perfect. There is no any other condition. This is done. 
Hebrews chapter 9, verse 25 and 26, let me read here. Not that he should offer himself often. As the high priest entered the holy, most holy place every year with blood of another, he then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once, at the end of age, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Uh, let me explain this one. You know, God loves you. He set all the plan to save you, but he had no idea what kind of sin is coming of your future. In case, he cannot forgive your sin, right? He cannot. He's not able to forgive your sin. Why? He doesn't have any idea which sin is coming for you in your future. Right? That's why, in order to save you, God, the Jesus, he prepared Lots of cross, right? There is a big storage house. He put the cross, right, in order to die. But your sin is totally cleaned so far. He's watching over you 24-7. And then whenever you commit a sin, the moment he has to die on the cross, right? Why? In order to you bring you to eternal heaven. But after that, Jesus said, Phew. but immediately you commit another lie. Because of the lie, you, you'd go to hell again, right? That's why because of the sin, Jesus died again. And then he had to declare everything, and then he finally said, it is finished again. And then, Phew. but immediately you commit sin again. So what would happen? He died over and over, over and over, again and again, again and again, right? In order to save you, in order to bring you to heaven, one person, how many cross do we need? This is a really stupid idea, right? The Bible says, He then would have had suffered one, often since the foundation of the world. Hmm? But now, once at the end of the age, He had prepared, uh, appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. Once for all, once is enough. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 to 12. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every person stand ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. But this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Who else can sit down? Who else, can, who else have the right and authority, authority to setting down the right hand of God? Jesus, right? Jesus, he did this. Offering of his body, of Jesus Christ, once for all, done. Totally cleansed, totally done. No worry, no worry anymore. Same chapter, 16 to 18. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts and their minds. I will write them, then he is. Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember continuously or no more. No more, no more. No more. Now I wear there is remission of these. There is no longer an offering for sin. No longer offering for sin. Yes, this is the declaration of Jesus, of heaven, right? But in order to redeem our sin, do we have to cry? Please, God, forgive me. Do we need to confess our sins over and over? Please, God, forgive me. And then, please, God, let me, let me in. Let me in. Let me in in heaven. Please, God, forgive my sin. Do we need to do that? No. No longer an offering for sin. It's done on the cross 2,000 years ago. Jesus, he didn't discuss with you in order to take your sin before, right? If he discussed with you, you would know about it, right? But he did it before your existence here, right? Why? He loves you. Once you take it as a trust, it's yours. 
right? I told you, truth is very easy. It's simple, but really hard to find, right? That's why Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the life, right? I'm the way. I'm the life. I'm the truth. Jesus, he wasn't here to speak about the truth. Jesus, he wasn't here to discuss about the way. Jesus wasn't here to share something about the life things, about to be good, about to be moral, about to be ethical. Jesus, he was here to give the life. That's all. Except through Jesus, no one can see the kingdom of God. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 said, But he was wondered for our own, uh, he, uh, he, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was uh, bruised for our iniquities. The, uh, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Actually, Save the sinner is really, really hard work. Believe it is easy, right? But give the life and then make them save. This is not easy. That's why Jesus went through so many harsh and difficulties. His holy head hmm, covered with the thorn crown. Hmm? For our sins from our heads. His holy hands cure the sick people and touching the children. His holy hands was nailed, were nailed. And holy feet hmm, traveled to save the sinner, lost people. Hmm? These holy feet were nailed. And his holy heart hmm, spear, uh, pierced by spear and bleeded because of all our sins. Uh, you know, uh, have you ever heard about the, um, the Rue Wallis? Rue Wallis is a well-known person. He was a general of the, uh, what is that, uh, civil war in the United States, right? And also he was, uh, he was, um, yeah. he was um, governor of Texas. Mm. He was a differentist. Mm. Differentist. He never cared about God is here or not, right? Mm. But uh, he discussed so many things with his friend Angusol. Mm. The Angusol, he was atheist. Uh, but uh, he was curiously while opening the conversation with Angusol, his friend, and then he uh, one thing caught his mind. Oh, I have to check. Why, why, who is Jesus and why all this can happen? That's why the while he studied about Jesus Christ. And then finally, while he's studying the, the book of uh, the Bible, he was able to be saved. That's why he's strongly inspired by God. And then by the help of the Holy Spirit, he made one great movie hmm? in, our, in our human history. Yes, that movie was banner, right? If you see the banner, you can see all the scene, all the scenery, there is Jesus. Understand? Um, if you know the gospel of Jesus Christ, you would understand why Jesus need to die on the cross like that manner, that, like that way. Let's see together. Yeah. 
This is the reason why Jesus had died on the cross. Actually, uh, it is not easy for him to save us, to take away all the sin of the world for him with the flesh. But he did it. If he gave up at the moment of die on the cross, we are hopeless. That's why we said that Jesus is the light of this world, right? Hope of this world. What do you see from Jesus? Hmm? Jesus is Savior. Save us from what? From our sin, right? Have you seen the light? John chapter 1, verse 9 said, The true light shines individually to each of us. The light is here. Hmm? Jesus, he did all these things for us, right? It wasn't easy. One day, <clears throat> I saw one broken necklace inside of the, the, the trash canister. You know, the, the ladies used to wear uh, the cross necklace, right? When I saw that, I, I thought that this is why this is gold. And then I picked at it, and then it was broken. Mm. And then also the, you know, the coating is gone and the very uh, many parts is already broken. That's why I put it again there. Uh, you, you, can make, uh, you can wear the cross necklace. And also you can put it in the garbage can. And then you can handle it in a different way, a different manner, whatever. But one thing is, uh, no, one thing is not allowed. Don't ignore the cross. Okay? If you ignore the cross, you would burn eternal hellfire forevermore. That is really going to happen. Understand? The cross is most easy. Did you find the answer? Did you find the answer? What answer? This one. Have you found the answer? Which one? Who died for you? Yes, Jesus. In order to find this, we came to the earth. If you find that answer, you achieve your goal of your life. Right? Fully ready now to go to heaven. Whatever will happen. Right? That's why only truly born Christian, we can take over our own death. Death is not the end anymore. And it cannot threaten us. That's why... Mm, 60 million, approximately, they sacrifice their lives because of this. Why? They already overcome their own death. This is not a death anymore, right? Shorten one day this world, longer one day in heaven. Do you agree? Yes. That's why. This is not a matter. Look at here. Let's compare the um, sacrifice. What if? God killed a pig hmm, in order to save you. Your value is nothing more than a pig, right? What if God killed a dog? Your value is nothing more than a dog, right? But he killed, nailed his own begotten son six hours long on the cross. And then he replaced his son's life with you. Your value is his son, right? That's why we adapted right now. If you believe this, we became a son of God because of Jesus. Jesus is our big brother, Guya. <laughs> right? Yes. We are next. And then he, 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 he surrendered his own son on the cross. And now God has so many sons now. Understand? Jesus died on the cross in order to save sinners. Yes, in order to find this one, this is best things, right, in my life. Can you go to heaven? Yes, Jesus Christ died for me, right? Barasa Akin. <laughs> to save me from my sins, my sins, right? And through his blood. Here's a song, hymnal song. We already sang before. No? Uh, I'm not good at singing, but, you know, nothing but the blood.
nothing but the blood of Jesus, right? Nothing can remove my sins except this. That's why blood is important, right? <clears throat> Here, <clears throat> forget it. <laughs> All right, here. I will draw one big book here. Where is this? Yes, Holy Bible. Bible. If you search the Bible, most important thing, it came out. What is that? Crucifixion, which all testify of me, right? Crucifixion. Because of this, Bible is here. If you look in the cross, you will find the most important part. Do you know what it is? Yes, blood. If you squeeze Old Testament, you can see the animal blood. Understand? If you squeeze New Testament, you can see the blood of Jesus Christ. Understand? Blood. Nothing but the blood. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 said, All we like sheep have, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of of all, of us all. Who put all my sins to upon Jesus Christ? God himself, right? That's why his salvation is perfect here. He said, it is finished, and bowing his head and gave up his life, his spirit. Because of, because of this, Jesus died on the cross. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14 said, For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. How, how long God perfect us? Forever, right? He has perfected us forever. That's why. No regret. We can't complain, right? Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. I, even I am, he who Blots out your transgression for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Here's the thing. Sometimes we, we got some painful emotion because of the memory of the uh, horrible situation that happened before, right? Um, our sin is totally cleansed in front of him. He forgave us. But what about memory? What about the memory of my sin, right? Whenever he looked into me, he could see my sin, right? I'm okay, no problem. I'm already here in heaven. Hmm? But whenever I encounter with God, He watching me with the memory of my sins, right? Who is going to be painful? God Himself, right? That's why, in order to keep the peace, He erased His memory of our sin. He could do it. For example, take away some piece of brain cells. Oh, it's my sin, right? So whenever, when we stand before God, he doesn't have any memory of my sin. That's why he could see as the righteous. That's why even we have sin, and even we will die here with my sin, but when we stand before God, God watching me, no sin. Why? No memory. Because of what? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, Right? Biblically, we define justification. You understand? How could it be justified? By the blood of Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible says. This scripture also says, I, the God, I, God, even I, am he who bore out your transgression. God himself, he removed the memory of my sin. You know, for sake of his own sake. Hmm? 
This is what Barbara says. Do you see your sin here? My sin is over there. Right? What happened? Covered. Covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Cover, cover. This is my, my gazet here. This one is covered. Could you see this remote controller? No. But I can see. Oh, it's here. That's not true. You know, cover this one, it doesn't mean disappeared. Here it is. It is always, right? The cover. Don't forget this one. Our sin was covered, not disappeared. Okay? In my side, I can play over and can see again and again, over and over, right? This is what happening in my side. My sin was cleansed by in front of God, right? But in my side, whenever I open my heart, there is a sin. Yes, this is reality. Cover, don't forget this one. That's why God covered it and he forget it. All my sins, right? That's why God, he could accept all of us. Why? Already covered with blood of Jesus Christ, right? What kind of sin I have already covered? God cannot see that. Could you see what is beside, you know, behind this monitor? Only you can see the red screen, right? Mm, likewise. When God sees your sin, I can see that, but when God sees your sin, only he could see the blood of Jesus Christ, right? This is what's happening here on earth. I have bolted out like a thick cloud your transgression, and like a cloud your sin returned to me, for I have redeemed you. Isaiah 44, verse 22. Question. <clears throat> If you return to me, I will forgive your sin, or I already forgive your sin. That's why you can return to me. Which one is correct? Yes, last one, right? Already forgive your sin. Return to me. It's okay, no problem. This is what the Bible says, right? But we are really awkward and strange. I have gone so far from God, right? All of a sudden, turn my back, and then run to him. This is really... Where is that? Awkward, right? But no problem to God. Why? He is the one who watching entire my life. He, he really got used to me. He knows me very well, right? Returning to him is no problem if you make a decision, right? Don't misunderstand this one. Many people nowadays, many people misinterpret this one. If I return to God, he's going to redeem me, right? That's wrong. That's not what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 said, In him we have redemption through his blood, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Yes, God is really rich about this, right? Redemption, what does that mean? Forgiveness of sin. His grace and his love totally in, uh, big enough to cover my sins. We cannot divide his love with the human population, number of human population. He can, his love cannot be divided by human population, number of human population. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and convey, uh, conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his what? Blood. The forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. God and I, we have an issue because of my sin, right? Uh, the wage of sin is God is still asking me the wage of sin without Christ Jesus. But I have no power, no ability to get solve this one. Hmm? But Jesus paid to God instead of me. The wage of my sin, redemption, ransom, right? And then God gave me a receipt. Your sin and your iniquities totally paid. I need proof, right? That's why God gave a receipt. What is that? 
the Bible, right? So, Jesus loved me, written here in the Bible. That's why, without studying the Bible, being born again and receive the salvation and forgiveness of our sins, that's not possible. Hmm? I found that wage of sin, all my sins were completely paid. Now I have no sin at all, and I'm free from sin. Praise the Lord, right? What if you and me uh, go to a Chinese restaurant, and then, uh, you know, uh, the famous food is soybean noodle. Have you, have, have you got this one before? Mm. It's very uh, tasty, right? But uh, while we start working, I got a phone call. And then, you know, emergency phone call. They said, I have to go hurry. And then before I left, I pay all, all about, all about this meal, right? And then I gave the receipt to you. With this receipt, you could be safe, right? Well, I already fully paid, right? You can feel comfortable, and then you will enjoy your meal, right? And uh, let's, let's, let's focus about payment. You already have, it, uh, have, have got half of the noodles. Half of noodles is here in, in your stomach. And now you are choosing some noodles inside of your mouth. Choosing, right? Mm -hmm. And there's still some part of noodles here in the bowl, right? Which one is paid? Oh, right? Your past noodles, your present noodles, your future noodles, already paid. Understand? Yeah. It was done on the cross. Fully paid, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith. And they're not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Gift. Gift. Salvation is gift from God. You know, faith is your both hand to receive this grace from heaven. You know, faith is your hands. Receive this gift from heaven. God and I here, I want to go to heaven. That's why I did my best. I have done so many religious deeds. Hmm? And then I need to be a sincere and offering and giving. This is my own righteousness, but this is not enough. That's why God, he gave his own righteousness. That's the salvation. Being given, this one, salvation is given. And this is God's righteousness. This is not acceptable. Only through this, we can go to heaven, right? By the mercy of God, by the grace of God. Bible telling us about it. Eternal redemption has the same meaning of this. Every single Lord's Day, we, we are studying about some content which is are relevant with this concept. Eternal life is no judgment, it's this being born again. Uh, the forgiveness of sins, become a children of God, become a righteous man, receive the Holy Spirit, and receive the grace. All are same concept and same meaning, right? What is being born again? You know, some other country, they, they carry misconception about being born again. If they transferred the Roman Catholic to the Protestant church, they used to say, ah, I'm being born in Christian. That's not, there is no that kind of conception in the Bible. The being born again is like that. You need to be born again son of, as a son of God. I was born as a son of my father, right? And then I will die as a son of God. How could it be possible? Because being born again, right? August 12, 1995, 19, I realized this one. Then finally, I was able to find out the truth of the gospel. Since then, I never worry about the perishment. No matter what, I will go to heaven. You know, usually most of the truly born Christian, especially the evangelical preacher, they have this preacher birthday. Hmm? Your flesh, that happened beyond your understanding, right? Can you remember what happened? When you come out from your mother's womb? No. From one year to three years or four years, you have no idea what happened in your past, right? But being born again is really, really crystal clear. 
this is a correct and real experience, right? With your own desire, with your own conscience, with your own rationality, you understand this happening in my life. Romans chapter 6, verse 22 said, But now, having been, uh, having been set free from sin and having become slave of, uh, slave of God, you have your fruits to holiness and the end, everlasting life. Set free from what? Sin. Jesus, he saved me from my sin. That's why Jesus could be my personal Savior. Right? Personal Savior. Why? You were in the middle of, you were drowning in your sin. And Jesus saved you from there. That's why Jesus became my personal Savior. Set free. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall you make you free. If you know the truth only, easily discern which one is fake. Right? It's easy. I will show one fake money. But this is not Korean one. That's why I can do it. You know what it is? It's the Philippine pesos. But this is fake money. Fake money. Uh, fake money. Uh, one of our members registered some retreat with this. Ooh, it's fake. That's why immediately I, I, I bought with the same amount of money with this. This is really, really well forged. Fake money. How could I recognize this one? I know real money. That's why I could recognize this one. Right? The truth is the same. If you know the truth exactly, you would understand which one is fake. Why people are they doing this? You would understand that. Right? That's why it belongs to the truth. This is really important. I will show one movie clip here. Look at here. What do you feel? Jumping loaf. <laughs> Of the blindfold, this is really embarrassing, right? You know, if you don't know the truth, you could be embarrassed before God, right? How funny is this? You know, jumping sincerely is okay, no problem, right? If you know the truth, truth shall make you free, right? I will show one more. This is really dangerous. D A N D A N G E R G E R O U S O U S Dunger Dunger M A M A T U T U R E R E Nature Nature F U F U T U T U R E R E Future Future Nature Nature G G O O O O G G L A L A E E Gulu Gulu G G I don't have any intent to diss these people, right? But point is this one: they spell correctly, right? But deliver different words. You know, if you deceived by the truth. The same things happen in our spirit. Understand? Sometimes they caught and they used to use the scriptures, but they say different story. There is no Jesus. Right? There is no blood. There is no redemption. Only happiness. Only be good. Right? Only stay well. That's all. They overlooked the safety of our eternity and spirit. What is important? This is really urgent and significantly important in our church work, right? Jesus came down to the earth to save a sinner, right? We are here as a sinner to be saved, right? If you know the truth, 
If you really think this is really great and huge and good, you have to say every single moment to those who stay outside of Christ, this is what we have to do. Don't you think so? Right? As the one who the truth, why you keep quiet? You, you insist that you already got saved a long time ago. Why you haven't evangelized even one single soul? Right? Now I'm boring people just to agree with the gospel. They're just saying, I know that. I know that. I will agree with that. I knew it. I knew it. That's the basic. But never experienced the saving soul. They never guide one person to Jesus Christ. Jesus is still waiting. Do you really think that is life of truly boring Christian's life? You know, God knows everything. God knows everything. You cannot deceive him, right? Matthew chapter 22, verse 29, Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. This is what is going on on earth. Do you remember two criminals who dying, who were dying beside Jesus Christ, right? One criminal, he was able to kiss something. At the last moment of his life, Jesus was dying before him, but he could recognize him. Oh, this is really Savior. And then he confessed. And then he repent everything. Yes, you are the real God. Please remember me when you come into your kingdom. When what Jesus said to him, how dare you? Huh? Have you ever attended church before? Have you ever studied the Bible? Do you have any single verse memorized? Jesus, he didn't say it like that, right? Why? He knew everything. And then Jesus understand. He really repented. That's why, okay, let's go together. And now, other criminal, he mocked the Jesus at, even at the last moment of his breathing. Hmm? If you are the son of God, say you, save yourself and come down from the cross. Heaven and hell, right? Heaven and hell is very near. Stay together, right? Let's imagine this one. All the angels and archangels, hmm? they were waiting, returning of king. The king, Jesus, God himself. His throne was vacant for the, month, uh, for the meantime, right? And then he came down to the earth. And then finally, he finished his work. And then they were waiting, returning of their king, and then watching him. But Jesus was walking with one man together, hand in hand. They're watching, and they're surprised. Is this the consequence of his work? One criminal over there? Yes, that's the truth. Right? They were surprised. That's the grace. That's the love of Jesus Christ. He was the first man to enter the paradise hand in hand with Jesus Christ. That's the result and fruits of Jesus Christ of his work on earth. Why not me? Right? Why not me? Why not you? You could go. Sure? Not yet? <laughs> yeah, sure. The Bible says, what Jesus said, today you will be, you will be in paradise with me. Right? You will be in paradise with me. Yes, that happened. John chapter 5, verse 24 said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hear my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Yeah. Jesus, why, Jesus proposed why Jesus, mm, Jesus come to the earth. Mm, reason why. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 said, In him you are trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ. Hmm? Here are the things. <clears throat> Previously, before, I, 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 I didn't understand my forgiveness. Oh, God, the Holy Spirit, He really wants to occupy me. 
and that dwells with me. But there is one issue. What was the issue? Ish was the sin. My spirit contaminated by the sin. He, even if he uh, wanted to come inside of me, but there is an issue because of sin. He couldn't do it. Why? This is Holy Spirit. Cannot stay with the sin, right? But what if immediately my sin was cleansed? Cleansed. <laughs> cleansed. And then, Holy Spirit can occupy me, right? So, which one comes first? Cleansing first and occupying first? Cleansing first, right? Without cleansing, cannot occupy us. Understood? Understood? Clear? Yes. But many people, they misunderstand. They were guided. They have been guided the Holy Spirit for a long time. Huh? And now, I know Oh, because of that, yes, definitely this is true. You were the lost before. Even, even, even you don't know about this one, right? Which one first? Cleansing first, right? Don't misunderstand. Don't misjudge about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The point is this one. You're already cleansed and by the, occupied by the Holy Spirit. It's okay, no problem. When what it was done, it's not a matter. You have experienced cleansed by all your sin, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ex- ex- uh, experiencing this one, that's the point. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5 said, Now he who has prepared us for, the, for this very things of God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Uh, what is clear and absolute evidence of being born again, this one. Whether you're occupied by the Holy Spirit or not, that is real. If you're occupied by the Holy Spirit, you could be guided by the Holy Spirit. But if you pretend and exaggerate occupied by the Holy Spirit, you could do a couple of times, but you have to give up. Why? You don't have strength, enough strength to follow Him. That's why pretending, of, uh, pretend, uh, pretending to be uh, truly boring Christian, that's not possible. Right? That's why you easily recognize, oh, you are not boring again yet. But the, the people are very angry. How dare you say, I'm not saved? <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 9 said, You, however, are controlled, not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Don't forget this verse. This is absolute truth. Absolute truth. Without transformation, no one will say, I really can go to heaven. That's not possible. The biggest evidence of being born again is transformation. Not their testifying, testimony. Right? Not their attending. God, before, he was a judge. I'm a sinner. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, covered everything. And then now, I'm his son, and God is my father. Being born again. Reborn. Rebirth. New Christian life begins as a child of God. Right? Since your spiritual birthday, you could bear fruits. John chapter 1, 12 and 13. 12 and 13 here. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become a children of God. To those who believe in his name, his name is salvation, right? Who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. All those things were born not of the blood. Blood and flesh, hmm? a will of man, it belongs to us, right? It's not going to work. It's not going to support us, our eternity, but of God. That's why we became a children of God, by the power of 
God. Not through my desire, intention, effort. Colossians chapter 4 verse 9 said, But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God. This is important. Everyone, most of the people, they know about God. Do you know the name of President of the United States? What is that? Joe Biden. Oh, you are a very famous person. It doesn't mean you can go to inside of the White House in the United States, right? Mm. But what if Joe Biden holds your hands and then bring you inside the White House? You could go inside with him, right? Mm. Known by God. That's the point, right? I know the God, so what? You need to be known by God, right? 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test to yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you are disqualified. That's why you have to check about your eternity. And then we can make one question. Yes, even, even our future sin was forgiven completely so far. Which means I can enjoy the sinning. What do you think? That's not possible. Here. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of her hand, out of my hands. My Father who gave, who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hands. Yes. Once saved, forever saved, never be lost. Right? So don't be deceived. But what if? Uh, I, I, I want to say, you already become a son of God. Right? The son, there's no eternal destruction. For example, every midnight, one guy, my next door, he came, intrude my house, and then took some, take some money from my wallet. If I know it, what, would you, what should, should I do? Call the police, right? But every midnight, my son takes some money from my wallet. What my wallet? Uh, what 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 I do? Call the police? Or kill him? No, I will discipline him, right? Hey, son, come on. Do you recognize? Do you know this is really bad work? And then when he confesses it, I treat him as a son, right? Uh, uh, he has a chest tightening, right? G- only f- true father can chest chasten and discipline their children. That's why after being born again, if we commit a sin, God will discipline you. Without discipline, you need to be suspicious about your salvation. Mm. Here, You. Let's see, uh, open your Bible, Hebrew, book of Hebrew, chapter 12, <clears throat> Hebrew chapter 12, verse 6, verse 6. <clears throat> Verse 6, for whom the Lord loves, his, uh, loves he chasten and scourge every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as, a, uh, as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimated and not son. True son deserve chastening of God, right? That's why totally different. You, you, uh, God, He's not going to um, dump you eternal hellfire again. He is going to chasten you, right? That's why being born again, after become a sin, uh, forgiveness, uh, God will treat you as a son. Last one, John chapter sixteen, verse nine. There's only one sin remain to go to hellfire. What is that? Unbelieving. 
John chapter 16 verse 9 said, Of sin because they do not believe in me. All the sin of the world was cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you don't take it, no way. There's no way, right? That's why sin, one sin is remain. Deserve to go to hellfire is unbelief, right? Now, my point is this one. We, we believe now. Do you believe it? Yes. Can you go to heaven? Really? Yes. Why not? Why not? Jesus done everything. Okay? Right. Let's finish. Uh, if you have any question, still, if you are suspicious about being born again, uh, let me help you. Right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, thank you for giving this opportunity to study your words in order to be saved. We have learned so many things from the Bible. And now we are clearly understand why Jesus had died on the cross and what's the meaning of shedding of all his precious blood. Through his blood, we are able to cleanse all our sins in the presence of your, your, our Lord. And now we can call, the God, call God as my Father. Please help us and guide us until the end of our life. And also, please remember all the hands who participate and help our ministry. Please bless them physically and spiritually. Thank you for everything. We only rely on you. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross instead of us. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time again. Finally, we stayed here to the end of Bible Seminar. And first of all, uh, we express our thanksgiving to Pastor Lee who conveyed God's message very easily and then clearly.